well, we've added the tabs. Let's say, what, what are we doing? We want to, um, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. The, the to-dos that we managed to write down last time are done. Now we just gotta write down the, the next set of to-dos. The, uh, the list of to-dos never ends. It's just what's materialized so far that we can complete. And then what next? Um, so we have the scan button here. And the scan button is responsible for queuing up the uh, transcription. Then we need something that is gonna allow us to check the status of the task and pull the data in. Um, yeah, so implement. See, how can I take just that one word? I want to do like, so if I hit tab, it takes the whole thing. Is it like shift to tab? No. Yeah. Like I used to know it just, you know, muscle memory, but new keyboard equals, <laughs> I don't know what the, the key combination is. Um, implement a component. to um, I guess really just to check the status of a task of yeah the stream now of, of the task okay uh, and then we'll display that along with it that, that doesn't need to be a separate thing uh, okay so that Is there anything else I want to think about doing right now? Um, somehow this component, still unsure if you want the Moonlander or the Voyager. What is the difference between the Moonlander and the Voyager? I don't remember if I looked at the Voyager. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I looked at all the things that were on their website. Um, but there must have been something about it that made me just like drop it from consideration. But I don't recall what that was. <laughs> the Voyager is smaller, has less thumb keys. Uh, it's also wired. Uh, but the Moonlander is also wired. Or did you mean it's wireless? I thought ZSA said that the, all of their keyboards were, were wired. There was a FAQ thing anyway, extolling the virtues of having wires. Um, also, we, uh, we hit our follower goal somehow. <laughs> Hundred and fifty followers. Oh, it didn't do anything on stream? No, the Moonlander's not Bluetooth. It's uh it's got USB C uh and then it has a cable that goes between the two pieces. I think, yeah, you were wrong, wrong there, no worries. Yeah, was the Voyager meant to like just be more portable? I think maybe that was the thing is that I didn't really care about portability. I mean, it's nice, even the Moonlander you can kind of like fold up and it has a little carry thing that you can take with you. But, uh, I mean, it's not like I don't ever travel, <laughs> but it's not a, a, uh, a big consideration for me. Uh, okay, so, rotation, component check the status of the task. Let me, uh, where is the UI? Let's take a look at where we're at here with uh, the UI. Right, so 
we are going to have the ability to see like the different segments of the transcription once we get that in. And that's what we're going to have. Um, I guess we can have a separate thing here. It's to be like, okay, um, when the task is done, display the results. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think that's a good set of next steps. Um, there's more, there's a lot more to do, right? Because ultimately what I want to be able to do is take the results of this and do I want to do anything here? Like one thing I have tried before um, in ChatGPT, uh, Let's see, do I have, is to take something like this, a, a transcript, and have it attempt to clean it up. Ooh, a wild Pikachu appears. I must have that. <laughs> I don't have a Pikachu. Okay, catch. Ultra Ball. All right, anyway. Um, So we could do something like that, where we, we try to ha have something that tries to clean up the uh, the transcript in line using GPT-4. We could potentially like send structured data and have it like look through it, although it's a lot. Hmm. Maybe that doesn't make sense to do here. Maybe that makes more sense to do in the context of like an episode. Like once we get this information, right. I think the next step after we get the transcript stuff in, um, well, two things. So there, there's the transcript and then do we want to do silence detection across the whole stream? Or do we, do we want to use this to define episodes and then do silence detection in the episodes. Probably across the whole stream. Oh no, Pikachu escaped. What are the odds? Okay, so I don't know. We could use silence detection as well as the transcription across the whole stream. And then we have all that information. And what, what could be cool is to ha have some kind of UI that shows the transcript and uh, detected silences. And we can use that to pick out where the episodes are, roughly. No, I guess really, exactly. <laughs> in terms of in terms of the breaks, right? And then, oh yeah, we, we, ha we don't have that in the UI yet, the episode. Uh, model edit and view so can't see that but just imagine <laughs> anyway okay so I think okay so I'm gonna say next thing will be uh, now do the same <laughs> Same for uh, silence detection. Yeah, that. Okay, so that is the plan ish. So for the scan button, I think there are some things we could do here where we like have uh, some configuration. Right, to be like, okay, here's how you build a prompt from data elements. Right now, let's see, do we have, we don't have a, a TypeScript typed for the, uh, the record we're getting back. What is in this record? Uh, let's 
let's see. Yeah, so there should be a title in the description. Let's make a little space here. Hmm. Debating whether I want to define a type <laughs> for for the record. Uh, we can live without it for a little bit. Do I want to... Okay, I think we're just going to grab the title, description, and prefix. Yeah, that would be good. So we'll do something like um, there we go. Uh, something like this. Wait, our uh, yeah, that works. Okay. So we'll do something like. Um, Ba -ba. Hey, I like that. Exactly. Good job, Copilot. Uh, almost right. Prefix, as it turns out, is the uh, is going to be the date. Again, there's things we could do to to make this more um, like we could have like a template somewhere for prompts for different things, and then use that. But for right now, this this will be good. This is gonna give us. Uh, let's see, do I want? I'm gonna do that. We don't need the extra white space. Hmm. I'll do something like this. Nah, that'll be fine. Um, let's see. So, I'll give a couple extra new lines, and maybe I will have a uh, like a, a break there. Something like this. Can have a, a header. I don't know how that's going to impact how the uh, the whisper model interprets the the thing. I guess we'll find out when we uh, when we use this. But um, that's this part. Oh, okay, yeah. So finish finish hooking up the mutation and scan button to pass the stream data. So that's uh, I think all we need. I don't have like a, a language on the stream record right now, but that's something we could. Oh yeah, your eyes. <laughs> So what we want to do here is we want to say record dot video clips. Yeah, exactly. So that that is a smell, a red flag. Uh, but what I would really like is the ability to define. Hmm. There's probably a tool out there, something that allows me to like have a struct defined in Rust, which defines the shape of the output. Hey, Death Row Gamer, good morning. How's it going? I like the emote. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Mrs. Dejected Lamps emotes. All right. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Chillin'. Ah, uh, um, yeah, it'd be cool if there was a way 
and there probably is a tool that I just don't know about to, because in our, in our API, right? Let's look at some Rust code really quick. In our API, where we're pulling these records from the database. So like in get one, we have some stuff. I think it's the stream detail view. Struct. Maybe I can go to its definition. Ba, 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 ba. Here we go. So we have a struct that defines like the shape of the data coming back from our API. And it'd be cool if we could generate the TypeScript equivalent. Like, okay, so this is gonna get serialized because we've, we're have we deriving serialize, right? So there's implementation uh, for that. And so it should look like some JSON. Like the Rust backend should know what the JSON should be shaped like. So if we're getting that JSON in the front end and we deserialize it in TypeScript slash JavaScript, then we know what it's gonna look like as well. So why couldn't we generate a TypeScript interface matching this, right? Uh, I'm sure we could. There's probably, there's probably even a tool to do that. I just don't know what that is. Um, but that would then allow us to be like, okay, so in uh, use record context, this takes a type parameter, right? So we could pass in that interface for the the uh, stream record, and that would then potentially tell us uh, all the way down into stream clips, right? Because video clips, rather, is a vec a video clip in line view, which is also serializable, which is how all the stuff on the back end works. So it should be able to tell us, you know, on the front end. Oh yeah, so clip is a a video clip and it has a URI and that's a string and then it all just works. Uh, but instead for right now, we just have any. Uh, and that's everything, right? For this first thing, hooking up scan button to pass the stream data. Maybe so, maybe so. Okay, so um, where is, nope. Not there. There we go. That's where my square brackets are. <laughs> All right. So that kind of wraps up the thing we were working on a week ago. Uh, and that probably works. I think it'll be more interesting if we go ahead and implement the next thing so we can kind of complete the, the loop and uh, be able to get the data back. Oh, nice. Sadly, I finished off my two shots of espresso before the stream even started. So now I just have water. Cannot have more than that in the morning or this will not be <laughs> a calm stream. A chill stream. <laughs> I mean, that could be fun too. Have, uh, have I used Obsidian in the past? I, um, I think you're referring to, it's like, um, a, a note keeping thing. I had a thing. It was like, um, a set of, uh, extensions for VS code that did some, something similar. Um, I have, and then I tried something else. I have not tried Obsidian itself, I think. Why do you ask? <laughs> it's a note keeping markdown based app, yep. There, there's a few of those going around, but I mean, this is fine in the short term. <laughs> Just a, an unsaved buffer. Just to uh, help me, uh, you know, <laughs> 
keep a little continuity. Yep. Now, actually, um, I haven't used it in quite a while, but I have a, a wiki repo, a private repo, <laughs> that uh, has a bunch of Markdown-based notes and, and stuff in it and to-dos. Um, and it seems like a good idea, but sticking to, like, keeping a diary in there. Yeah. <laughs> it is a it is a Vim reference. Look, I used Vim for a long time. And an attitude stuff for kids, yeah. Mm. Okay. So where are we implementing a component to check the status of the task? Oh well, let's uh let's see here. We can close that. So probably in streams edit in our, our tab. It probably probably makes sense to do it all inside of streams stream transcript input. Brainless is always working. <laughs> Seems like always talking about that, uh that work. Oh, I see. Okay, so what we do here, just coming back to how you play me your OCD. Ah, uh, I've I've definitely been there. I think I was saying this the other day, but yeah. After a few years of that in uh, a prior form of my current job, <laughs> I, uh, I managed to, to break the cycle. So we are using form iterator and then we sneak in our scan button. So I guess we're gonna implement and I think I mentioned this on the last coding stream that I would like to probably make this a little bit more general purpose, but uh, it's too early to do that in terms of where we're at in this component. Like we need to see this applied a couple times and then figure out what the commonalities are. Coding is a hobby for you. It's always been just, <laughs> I work kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Um, but at least my, my, this, this is my hobby coding, <laughs> uh, it has nothing to do with my work coding. All right. So we're going to make, what are we going to call this button? We're going to make a, uh, const. Scan button two is copilot suggestion. That's wrong. By education, you're an industrial engineer. We had one coding related course, Pascal. <laughs> ah, yes, Pascal. Have I ever written any Pascal and like compiled it? I think not. Yeah, I don't think so. So the purpose of the button, which is gonna be more than a button, but the purpose of the this component is to check the status of the task. And if the task is complete, to facilitate importing the data. So there's gonna be probably like two buttons and some kind of indicator. I guess we could call this like results loader. Async result loader, <laughs> something like that, I don't know. What's the name? As it turns out a lot. Is this gonna have children? 
We can do that here, right? It just has potentially a label. I don't even know if we need the label. Let's just uh, go this way. What's Copilot going to write for us? Okay. We are... Hmm. I guess we're going to implement another custom data provider method. Except this one we're just going to pass the URL <laughs> to call. Um, what else you got? Okay. No, none of these. Uh, where is the curly brace? Is it here? Ha ha, it is. All right. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, I don't want any of that. Uh, let's start with what it's going to look like. So we're going to need, we'll just use a fragment for right now. we can ba, 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 ba. I'll just add some consts here to stub out the uh, the things for the button that are probably going to be needed yeah. now something like check status Exactly. Uh, on click. So the purpose of this, this button is going to be to check to see if the data, the asynchronous task, has finished yet. So um, we'll just have a function here called check uh, status. Uh, I keep forgetting to install our. Is it is it is it Arch or I guess it's Arch, right? Uh, on your main laptop before for your gaming night with your group. Yep. You need Arch specifically for what kind of game? Just console log that we uh, the function has been run. So there's that, and then we're gonna want something that is going to load the data. Now, do we want to hide the button if the data is not ready? Ooh, it could be. Um, also, I'm noticing the problem with having four screens is like, <laughs> I keep seeing stuff out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> it's a little distracting, but I guess that was the case with the three screens. And the, at least this way, I don't have to turn my head like 90, do, 90 degrees to be able to see it. You have a dual boot partition, never use the Windows one, so it's just oh, taking half the space, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yep, Manjaro. Mm hmm. I don't know. Fox. <laughs> Foxy Blue, thank you for the 50 bits. You're here now. Applause for Foxy Blue. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Or, uh, yeah, still morning for you, too. <laughs> so I think we want just like a conditional here, right? So we'll say, uh, let's see, curly braces are there, yes? Good, good, good. Um, we'll say, hmm, actually, sorry you're late, no worries, welcome.
<sighs> Late to your moderating duties. <laughs> Fortunately, no, no, uh, nothing to moderate. Everything's great here. Um, but I feel like there's like a few different statuses. <laughs> right. Yeah, I actually slept in yesterday. I like I woke up when my alarm went off because my alarm goes off now every day at 5:30. <laughs> but I'm very unusually, I turned the alarm off and I went back to sleep. Uh, and I woke up and got uh, breakfast order going and got on the computer and saw Foxy was already streaming for like an hour. So really, whose fault is it? Um, anyway. So we have like a few different conditions though here, right? So we have like, uh, we've not checked the status is one. We are currently checking the status is two. We've checked the status and the data's not ready is three. Or four, we've checked the status and the data is ready. And I think Can we, so those are all different states, but the question is, are in terms of what shows up in the UI, which of those like collapse down to something that actually uh, has an effect on which components we show, right? So we want, we want to have some kind of like, um, what is this? Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, we want to have something here that's going to be like, um, like a progress indicator, right? Uh, so let's just put a comment here for the moment. Pro so we're using uh, Material UI, or at least that's what React Admin uses. So it would make sense to keep on using that. Um, so we'll go find the component from Material UI for that in a minute. But we'll have that there. And so that will be, that could actually serve double duty. So like when we load the UI, we could have some kind of like indeterminate state and you click the button and then as soon as you click the button button the progress indicator is run could start spitting or stay indeterminate right and then it's only when we actually have data that the third thing shows up which is the load um load data button Hmm, okay. So for right now, I'll do something like um, data ready. Except not that, I just want a button. See if I can get Copilot to write the rest of this. There we go. Uh, yep. Load data. Load results. So we want this to be disabled if, I don't know if we need to have this disabled, right? Or for that matter, going back, I guess I asked this question already and maybe I'm just changing my mind. But maybe we could just show the button all the time and it's just disabled if the data's not ready. I think generally speaking, it's important that it's clear if you have buttons in your UI or other things that users can act on, it's clear what needs to be done for the buttons to not be disabled. Otherwise, it's just like, okay, there's a button there, it's disabled, what do I need to do to make it, to, to use it? I wanna click this button, how do I make it a thing I can click? 
I, but I think in the context of this, it, it's pretty clear. Maybe. So if the data's not ready, then the uh, the button will be disabled. So let's give that a shot, and we'll add another stub uh, function here. And then we're just gonna dump this right there and save it. Now, this doesn't actually do anything, but maybe we can see what this looks like. Uh, as I recall, we have to go restart the front end. Yeah, this has been running for a little bit. Let's restart the front end. I guess maybe something that might be worthwhile to do is to see if there's a way to make it so that we can um, have Vite automatically restart the front end um, when running inside of Docker. Like we're, we're running it through npm run dev. So normally, like when you're running outside of Docker, <clears throat> it would automatically detect if there are any file changes and reload, but uh, it doesn't seem to be doing that in here. And there's probably, I feel like I've solved this once already. Do I have npm run hot? I don't think that's a thing. So we have watch use polling in the front end. And I think this is was supposed to solve that. Uh, or is, is this wrong? Is HMR supposed to be true? I think there was a port issue with this. I'm not sure. But no, I don't think um, npm run hot is a thing for just kind of out of the box beat. You have dev build serve type check type check lint in format. Might have to check the beat docs. Um, but first, let's see let's see what we've done. What have we wrought? Oh, you have a custom command for it? There we go, so now we have three buttons. I'm not excited about them being stacked like this. Um, but if we, how do I get to F12? <laughs> uh, 10, okay, that and R, there we go, okay. Yeah, so I have HMR off, which is supposed to start these attempts, stop these attempts, but that doesn't seem to work either. So if we click check status, um, well, that's not supposed to do anything. Interesting. I think that's just triggering something in the uh, in React admin to pull associated records. It's fine. Okay, and of course this is disabled because we have that turned off. Uh, I guess while we're talking about it, let's see. Beat. Reload in Docker container. <laughs> looks familiar. I think that's not a thing anymore. Uh, yeah, here we go. So passing use polling, server watch options, feet. Uh, 
uh, server watch he's pulling true server watch he's pulling true what does this say well let's use fs.watch file backed by polling or fs.watch if polling leads to icp you usually set this to false it's typically necessary to set this to true to successfully watch files over a network it may not be necessary uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. okay well this this doesn't work i guess we could change it to false Took a, take a look at the, the docs here. So we, what does the um, HMR option do? Disable or configure HMR connection. Set it to, uh, set the overlay to false. Uh, Front end uses Webpack. Uh, yeah. I think, I mean, V does things. <laughs> It, it's a it's a black box to me, honestly. Yeah. Um, so where's that watch option? There we go. <laughs> it's a black hole to you. Yeah, I mean, I've I've set up. Uh, I've been using Veep recently on projects, but I have set up um, just like Webpack stuff in the past and, and other things. Um, if set to null, no files will be watched. File system watcher options to pass on to uh, however you say this. Watches the root and skips this and this by default. Uh huh, uh huh. Uh, uh, this also applies to running Docker with WSL2 backend, which I think we are. To fix, either use WSL2 application to edit your files or use polling true. Well, oh, it's like, what key am I pressing? Hey, Marxy. Thanks for the lurky. <laughs> yeah, he's pulling true. Server watch, he's pulling true, yeah? Doesn't work though. Oh well, I guess I'll just be uh, restarting the uh, uh, container. Until some other idea occurs to me. Working there, app. Yeah, no. Okay, so anyway, we got a couple minutes before the first break. <laughs> so let's see, can we can we move forward on this anymore? Um, I think uh, let's see, so to check the status, right? We wanna be able to check the status of our task. Um, we can get, we need to get the record because the record is gonna have the task URL and some other things. So one of the things, one of the things that we probably wanna do actually is check to see, is there even a task, right? If there's not a task um, in the record, then we probably just want to show nothing here. Um, we'll just return early. So um, if, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Copilot got it. Um, if we are viewing a record that's unsaved, which is why it would be falsy, or if there's no transcription task URL, which I'm pretty sure is the right thing, uh, let's see, control shift F. Yeah, that's the right thing. Cool. Uh, we want to return null. And then um, what else do we want to do here? We can, yeah, I know, 
I have a, it popped up. <laughs> it says I have three, two and a half minutes before the ad starts. So let me see if I can, I can put one more thought out there before we uh, take a break. And that thought is a uh, data provider. <laughs> uh, there we go. So we need a custom method here um, to get the transcription task. Yeah, something like this. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually right. So we'll say to do, to do, uh, check if this uh, needs more. <laughs> uh, all right, cool, save that.